amazing. I mean, uh, let me uh, let me ask you this, because we've talked about how Brock has risen from places unknown to turn into what he's turned into, and we've given a ton of credit to Kyle Shanahan for identifying this is my guy and not sticking with the higher priority draft that was Trey Lance and so on and so forth. What role does Brian Greasy play in this? Because you only talk about QB coaches when things go wrong. You only talk about offensive coordinators when things are going wrong. They're kind of forgotten when we come and and hand compliments out. Brian Greasy is either a Svengali or a genius or about to be regarded as someone who needs to be elevated to offensive coordinator or head coach one year. I mean, how much... How much credit does Brian Greasy get for what we're looking at with with Brock Purdy? Well, it's it, and it's all tied together. Brian Greasy um, was there at Michigan with Tom Brady, so you know, I mean, um, and Brian Greasy was a decent NFL quarterback in his own right. I as far as as far as identifying Brock, I think Brian Greasy is part of their equation. I know that that uh, Greasy said that he liked Brock um, and, and how much did that sway the Niners? Um, you know, that it's told it, John Lynch tells a story that, you know, that one of the scouts banged the table and said, you know, we really, I really want this guy. Um, and I forget the guy's name, but we probably never should kind of like Larry Riley wanted Steph Curry, but yeah, I mean, there's the identifying of, of Brock in the draft. And I think definitely Greasy had some hand in that. And then there's the development of Brock. I mean, I asked Brock the other day, what do you do when you come off the field between series? And he said, I go over to Brian Greasy and he tells me what he sees. And then we look at the tablet and then I concentrate on my breathing and we go over, you know, what he sees in real time. Um, and and then I get, I get my mind right to go back out there and and execute. So... You know, I think Brian Greasy's had a huge hand in it. He's had a huge now. I mean, Brock Purdy's Brock Purdy. I don't believe that Brian Greasy made Brock Purdy Brock Purdy. I don't. I think Brock Purdy was damn good. Iowa State wasn't, you know, killing people, and suddenly Brock Purdy showed up in Ames, and they were. And then when he left, they went one and eight in conference. So I, I, I I'm not going to say that. You know, I'm going to give Brock Purdy um, credit first and foremost. But as far as the Niners identifying that Purdy was a good quarterback prospect, I think Brian Greasy had something in that. In that, and as far as developing him and helping him, you know, bring him along, um, I don't think. And, and here's why I think it, Greasy deserves credit here, is that I think Kyle Shanahan has created a, you know, an offense and play calls that obviously benefit um, Brock Purdy. Uh, but I, I I don't know that I would say that that uh, Kyle Shanahan is a is a Mike Holmgren like quarterback whisperer. I think he's more like his dad, who was an awesome play caller. Um, and 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 I think that maybe you need a guy like Greasy to you know to complement what Shanahan doesn't do as well. I think Shanahan's more of a awesome play sequencer designer than he is of a quarterback, you know, developer. Um, But I don't even know that. That's just what I suspect. In fact, one of the questions I'd love to ask this week is, you know, I've been kind of told um, on the record, off the record, that Mike Shanahan, who was there in Seattle and looked really thrilled when when uh, Purdy hit Ayuk for the clincher, um, that he has, that Mike Shanahan has a regular hand in what the Niners do. Why and, wouldn't he? What, what a resource. Well, why wouldn't he? It's because he lives in a different city and and um, he's a retired coach and this and that. But, but yeah, I mean, you he's bring up a good point. Good I mean, he was a great play caller. He watches and grinds tape. You go back and you watch any of those old 
Super Bowl reels where, you know, Steve Young is talking about the practice and the night before the Super Bowl over the Chargers when they blew their doors off and they were just like, all right, this play is going to do this. This play is going to do that. And then the third play is going to be a touchdown. And then this is going to happen. And then this is going to happen. And then that play is going to be a touchdown because we've set it up that way. And everything that they talked about came true. Like you want a guy like Mike Shanahan. Oh, absolutely. You, <laughs> you know, that's. It's it's a, it, 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 it it's, makes me it makes me as a 49er fan feel more confident knowing that Mike Shanahan could be having some say in their offensive play calling or play design. Um, I, I think some of the most genius plays I've ever seen in 49er history going back to the the one that sticks out in my mind. And I've mentioned it to Kyle in the past was the first score of the of Super Bowl 29 when the Niners are playing the Chargers and they run Jerry through the middle of the field against a zone and he takes all the defenders with him and they basically got waters out of the backfield and he just follows Jerry on the same path and was wide freaking open and it was like I remember asking Kyle about that play, and I'm like, man, I would love to see that play with Ayuk and uh, McCaffrey, you know, where you can just get Ayuk and draw the coverage all away and then dump it to McCaffrey on the same same deal and let him just go. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I Mike Shanahan was an amazing offensive coach. I mean, if we had Steve Young sitting here right now, he could attest to it firsthand <clears throat> that Mike Shanahan was one of the greatest. I mean, this is a guy who, you know, Steve Young was there with Walsh, was there with Holmgren, was there with Tressman, was there with several offensive coaches through the years. I guarantee you, you could probably get Steve's assessment on Mike Shanahan as a sequencer, play designer, and I bet you he holds him in the highest of regards. What, you know, what father, son, look, coaching is the family business. Right. The way that quarterbacking was the Manning family business. Coaching is the Shanahan family business. And the old man is the best consigliere that you can have sitting at the table helping you come up with the right play. And I'm look, it's a resource that Kyle would be insane to not tap into. And I'm sure he does all the time. And you can and what do you and what do you think Shanahan is invested when they go to their cutaway? To, to to the elder Shanahan shots, you can you can tell he's got some skin in the game, man. He oh. ain't just watching his kid. Right, right. No, totally, <laughs> Damon. That is such a that is so true. He doesn't look like, hey, I'm here eating popcorn. Right. It's like, hey, I def I designed this play. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, and, it, and, and if you're Mike Shanahan, I mean, think about it. You've got two little boys. I got three, three boys, four kids. When you've climbed to the top of your professional field the way Mike Shanahan has. And you've won Super Bowls. He won with the Niners. Then he went to Denver. He won with Denver. Um, he's a made man, right? He's like, and what do you, what do you, what does Mike Shanahan want more than anything in life? I guarantee you, he wants Kyle to win a Super Bowl. Oh, he well, wants that's... Kyle to have the ultimate validation. And, and because he knows Kyle's a great young coach, but he also knows Mike Shanahan's a, a smart enough guy to know that you don't get love in this world without pelts on the wall. Andy Reid ain't Andy Reid unless he goes to Kansas City and wins with Mahomes. Otherwise, he's just another another good coach who didn't get it done. But if he get if he goes to Kansas City and gets it done with Mahomes, now he's a Hall of Famer. Well, the same thing with Kyle. Kyle's a damn good coach. He's a Hall of Famer if he wins a Super Bowl or two. So I'm sure Mike's single purpose um, football wise is to help his son climb to the top of that mountain. What and father, what father doesn't want their son or their daughter to exceed their own success? Right. That's it. I mean, that, that isn't, isn't that what fatherhood is? You want your children to do better than you, especially if they chose your field, right? You know, if you have your young kid Jack suddenly becomes some great talk show host, and he and you're oh, sitting God there, forbid, Larry. God you're, forbid. Oh my God, no, we can do better than <laughs> he, that. You're vacationing on some exotic uh, Bahamas island with your lovely bride, and and he's saying, "Dad, you know, I got a big show coming up, and I, and I, what do you think? 
you would absolutely be like, hey, let me get the sand out of my toes. Let me put away my fancy drinks. Let me just go into a room. Jillian, I'll be back. I need to talk to Jack. I need to counsel him right. on this incredible show that he's got coming up. And you would take it very, very seriously because you would dream the dream for him. Absolutely. absolutely here's what I would do, kid. This is you do it your way, but here's what dad would do. These are three talking points, and it might be time to pull the old run a fake punt bullshit out of your back pocket because that always works good on a slow week. I mean it, Larry. <laughs> no, that fake punt, no one's looking for it. Spring it, Kyle. <laughs> Spring it, spring it. And everyone's waiting for Wishnowski to have his little whirly bird uh, floppy disc punt of his and uh, run it, run it. Can that, can, can that Pollock throw an eight yard out? Do it. 